It was something quite special. Oh, that was incredible, that to them, was an international, you see. Um, Wales came there thinking, well, that's all we have to do, turn up and we'll beat a good Bregen side. But Bregen played as if their very lives depended on it. It was an outstanding performance, they jumped in the air at the final, was still the supporters were jubilant. Now, if I was Meredith James, I'd be saying to these boys, hey, you beat a Welsh team in the early on of the season, you can beat a Neath team here now. That's the kind of spirit Bregen will have to show this afternoon if they're to live with Neath. I've heard Moravis James mention the fact that he's afraid that some of his younger, less experienced players might freeze on this, the big occasion. Is it a likelihood? I, th I think they could, they might well do. All these new players, are, nine of them have been here before, a lot of them have played in other cup finals, and that is important, running out, knowing, having been tasted the atmosphere. And I think, you know, in one thing, a lot of the Neath players have had disappointments on the international scene this year. Things haven't gone right to them. And I think they'll want to say, I want to go up there and show how really good I can be. Well, the final moments of what must be the tensest moments of all for some of the players, really when they emerge with the sunlight and the corresponding noise, it really will be. This is the secretary of the Welsh Rugby Union, and just dressed in white, you see in the tunnel, a man ready to referee his fourth final, and by far the most experienced Welsh referee these days, Clive Norling. Oh, without a shadow of doubt, I think the best in the world. And it'll be interesting to note what footwear Clive has got on, because I'm sure he came out with gym shoes earlier on. Well, here we are, the two captains, leading the two teams. So suddenly all that pent-up frustration released as they emerge into the sunlight and have a feel of the ground. So the players will group and will be presented as Kevin Phillips calls his team across and John Apsey will do likewise, captain of Bridgen. His dream at the beginning of the season, he tells me, was to lead Bridgen to a cup final. So it's a dream realised at least for Bennett. A great club servant, John Apsey. Um, a solid man, the man you can always depend on, a great tackler, and he'll be very proud out there, and he'll want the best from his boys. He, look, he's going round there, he's very nervous, and I'm sure all the Virgin team are very nervous. Great moment for John Apsey. You were like Kevin Phillips, a very experienced uh, cup final captain. Will he have nerves, having been oh, here so often? I don't care if he's played 50 times to Wales, this is a great occasion for Neath and for Kevin Phillips, and he is walking around telling his players, this is what I want from you. Look, they're all, you can look at their faces, he's determined to win. He, he, had, he raised that cup last year, and he wants to do it again. He's as nervous as anybody. Brian Williams in front of him, Andrew Cambry, the giant Cambry, six foot seven, and he'll ex be expected to do much of the line-out work. As out of the field emerges, the president of the Welsh Rugby Union, Mr Clive Rowlands, accompanied by the finance director of Schweppes, Mr Ian Woodhead, and uh, he'll be presented to the players. Very interesting, when we'll come shortly to Paul Thorpe, but he's heavily strapped on his hamstring. Only had the one game, I believe, since the injury out in Ireland. It'll be interesting to see how he'll stand on this firm ground. Alan Edmonds presented 45 tries this season. Jason Ball, then Paul Thorburn, Martin Morris, Chris Bridges, up-and-coming scrum half. Colin Leighty, such a solid centre. Alan Bateman, newly capped. And Mark Jones, of course, the giant Jones, the number eight. Glyn Throellen, fast developing. Paul Williams, the outside half, and then the giant Canterbury. Brian Williams, and finally at the end of that line, or at least, last but not least, it's Roland Phillips, and then Jeremy Pugh. And Clive Norling. Welcoming Hand and Derek Bevan, of course, the th three that represent Wales, Les Peard as well, on the international refereeing panel. John Powell is the man leading the three dignitaries, the chairman of the Cup Competition Committee, as Arwal Parry is introduced by John Apsey. And then Glenn Webb and Richard Diplock, the two wingers. And what a moment for the young centre, Luke Evans. Tremendous promise, Aled Williams. Kevin Ellis, and then moving on to the front row of David Austin, Wayne Hall. He'll be a, an influence in that front row, and Paul Edwards. Paul Cowlock and Nigel Spender. And then the back row. They'll have to do the hard graft, the tackling, preventing these with Bryant, Williams, and Michael Budd. So 
tensions building here. The ground absolutely crammed for a sense of anticipation. Those that, who have written off Bridge End's chances, I'm sure, are thoroughly mistaken. And I would imagine that when the first whistle goes, the opening whistle, that they, of all people, will give everything they possibly have. Interesting, my local bookie this morning, for those people who like gambling, he was given even money, both teams, but he was given Bridge End 20 point start, so. You know, the, the odds are stacked in Neath's favour. So, as yes, Paul Thorburn seems in a relaxed mood. Just that slight doubt about that hamstring, I would have thought, and it's his kicking leg as well, which will put an added strain on that, Phil Bennett. Yes, and the ground's very firm, and of course, with a tour to Namibia due, I'm sure Ronnie Walder and the rest of the sectors will be very interested in Paul Thorburn's performance. But I think the key man as well has got to be Ken Murray, isn't he? Six foot eight, never really done it, shown a great deal of promise, outstanding prospect. We've taken him to, New to Namibia. He needs to produce the goods this afternoon. He's always injured, goes off halfway through the game. This is a big task for Kembury today, and I'm sure Ronnie Walder will be looking for a great performance from him. Yes, the pressure being felt has appeared here before, injured in a final, and it's his track record really that co causes just a little bit of concern. Yes, let's hope today he can go through the full match. Vital for himself, Nathan Wales. Gen team, Wales' leading point scorer, Arwell Parry at fullback, the tremendously promising Luke Evans at centre, and that influential half-back partnership of Williams and Ellis. Look for their sharpness and Williams' angles of running. Cowlock and Spender expected to contest the line-out, Bryant, Williams and Bud expected to keep their opponents the right side of the game line, and the team captained by John Apsey. Such a familiar look to that Neath team ball, just a little inexperienced on the right wing, but Thorburn, Bateman and Leighty there to nurse him along. Williams and Bridget, Bridges, underrated but highly efficient half-backs, and then that pack with a towering Kembury expected to control the line-out, and then that all-international back row with Phillips' ability to hold up the ball, crucial to the cause. The other Phillips, Kevin, captains the side. Clive Norling, such a well-known figure, just explaining that he doesn't want something, probably doesn't want any assistance, he can do the thing himself, he says. The big man for the big occasion. It's all set here then at the National Stadium, the final of the 1990 Schweppes Cup competition, as Brigen poised to start. Well, Paddy will be the man to take first pot. Final check from the referee. Clive Norling inquires if his tech judges, they are ready. So is Kevin Phillips. Norling signals, Paddy responds, and the match is underway. Well, Finally, it was well controlled by Neath. And Roland Phillips immediately is into action as Bridges. The support is there in the shape of Williams, helped by Captain. 
stepped into it, tremendous possession into midfield it comes, but Williams, well that might prove to be a lucky one if Edmonds can get it, but well shepherded by Glenn Webb. But what an opening by me from that far side, and the two Phillipses immediately into the battle. It wasn't a bad kick by Parry, but Neath got the ball, and Roland Phillips came away straight away, showing his strength. Immediately the line out tactics really being employed, variations already. Cowlock, good possession. To surprise Ali slightly, only so sure of hand. And that kick will offer Edmund some space. Gets the support of Brian Williams. Neath already into the groove. Phillips will hold it. Morris will support. Just that little angle to take out opposition three quarters. But then the stability of Williams spots the little gap. But just, well, a little unlucky. A little apology from the outside half. But really, it's such a typical Neath opening. But that was good play by Paul Williams. The kick was very unlucky. It was a, a yard or so in touch. But he'd noticed that the Bridget centers had come up very flat and were nearly offside, so he put the ball in front of his forwards. It's Spender and Glyn Schoenin, the two at the front, with Cowlock and Kembury in the middle, Williams and Jones at the back. Those are the opponents. It's Jones that wins it. Schoenin plays the scrum half. Pew. So typically, the short route. Again, ripped away, and this is the tactic we saw employed last season from Bridges. The tester for the fullback, Parry, equal to the cause, and what an encouraging opening to the, for the fullback. Absolutely certain of his catching, absolutely sure of his timing, and a fine clearance. Well, Neath counteract with lineup variations of their own. It could have been a little nudge, but the bridge end that take it on, but expertly done, and Ellis drives it home, what little breeze there is here, just helping that along, but frustrating Thorburn in the fact that he just wouldn't run that extra yard, and the Welsh international fullback just forced into kicking for touch. That was a good kick by Kevin Ellis, his forwards were under pressure, gained 50 metres, good play by the scrum half, number nine. Such a tremendous competitor, Kevin Ellis, he relished this challenge. So five, or four rather, at the lineup this time, but yet again, Neath win it. And just watch this man's technique. Somehow stays on his feet, somehow holds the ball up for his fellow players to hang on to and drive off. And that finally, and that's very much an American football style, really. The blockers in front and the giant kicker just behind to drive it home. Very interesting there, that as Paul Thorburn got the ball, Paul Williams out it up, running in front of him to make sure that nobody could touch the big full-back. Really, we haven't seen a, a full line-out as yet. Both sides weary of one another and attempting to outsmart. Well, Roland Phillips were once just nudging that forward, the advantage being played, but, well, Norling decides that a line-out is more in the interest of... Uh, Bridge end. That's the tight head prop, Jeremy Pugh, a man for this type of occasion. Wayne O'Hall, one cap to his credit, he kept Kevin Phillips out to the Welsh team at one stage. Jones wins that off opposition ball. Roland Phillips still holds on despite the tensions of tacklers and releases, which is just a little unsure of his touch, but. That's in front of his forwards. Morris will put his fellow players on side. What a crunching tackle from the flanker. Ellis will have felt that. And, well, Norman decides something. Driving in on the wrong side. And Wayne Hall had a little look. Felt that there might be a chance to build up just a little bit of momentum. But finally, because of the efficiency of his left foot, Luke Evans, the youngster, is cool, called upon to aim for touch. What a fine spiralling kick from this young centre. I've never seen a game start where there's been so many short liners, two-man, four-man, and obviously both sides very, very weary of each other's potential, but Neath have won most of the liners so far. So obviously with the pace of the opening, the crowd already on the edge of their seats. David Austin in the front for Bridge End. 
Brian Williams for Neath. Morris holds on to that ball. Just guided down to him. On the fringes, you see Williams just trying to hold off the ball. And so is his captain, Phillips. And really, what all they do is open up a little gap for the ball to emerge and then for the half-backs to finish it off just nicely. Owen Williams attempting to make himself heard above the din here. Signal so crucial at the line-out. Three man this time. And Spender, Cowlock and Williams to contest it for Bridge End. And Cowlock wins it. A chance then. I see what Williams. Bryant is on the shoulder with space. What a fine charge from the flanker. That's creamed off absolutely perfectly. That was tremendous rucking as one or two of Brian Williams and Owen Williams have a little exchange of words, but that was the initial drive from Bright was expertly done. The creaming off by the rest of the forwards laid the ball bare, and all Neath could do was to get into an offside position. This is the test of nerve then for the fullback Arwell Parry. Wells is leading point scorer with 400 points to his credit this season. But no points will be more crucial than should he kick the first three of this cup final. Arwell Parry to put Neath. Well, no, I wasn't saying Neath adrift, but. What a miss for Bridget, really crucial at this point of the game. That will shatter out of a party, there was a certain three points there, as forwards have worked very hard, he'd be disappointed. A quick restart from Neath, not allowing Bridge End to settle down. The ball emerges on the Bridge End side though, they control it and drive it. Again they have control, Austin sets off on a little drive, this is sniping stuff for Bridge End. Ellis finally gets it away. Alan Williams has spotted a little space out wide, and that really is pinpoint work from the outside half. He'll take great delight in that. Right at the corner flag, and sets up a tremendous platform for Bridge End. Here's where Kevin Phillips earns his money, his throw-in has got to be inch-perfect here, no tapping back as far as Neath are concerned. Look, there's the line. So he needs to keep this as tight as possible. Glenn Llewellyn is the front jumper. And notice Owen Williams has gone down to Mark Henbury in the middle of the line-out. So pressure on the Neath jumpers. Cowlock and Williams marking Henbury. Spender marking Llewellyn. And it is low and flat, and it's won by Bridge End as Ellis. Burrows very nearly through, so competitive is the scrum half, and half a gap to most people, but for him, it, they just open up, so strong, so determined, and just a little knock for his pains as well. Interesting that uh, Austin is holding his hand up, he wants that ball to be lobbed as high as possible, it makes it so much more difficult for tight discipline stuff. The arms go up again, wants Kevin Phillips to lob it, offering his jumpers a chance, but that's well done. Phillips, ever-present of the supporter in the line-out, the sweeping job, and so efficiently done that the Gen have to put hands on the ground to try and kill it. Well, they've given away a tremendous position there, having worked so hard to get into the corner, just a little bit of... Ill-disciplined, really, in the fact they should have kept their hands off the ball. And Thorburn now will further punish them with a stupendous kick. Tremendous height on that ball. And, again, so efficient in easing pressure. What I've noticed is that when Bridgend have called the two or three man, Mike Budd, the block by moving forward, is going out in the middle of the field hoping for a good quick ball. Jones and Williams. Jones the master yet again. But Kembry can't control it. Phillips finally, no. Nudge forward. This is Clive Norling, no advantage. Scrum, which offers Bridge End a fine platform again. I'm sure from where Arlen Williams is standing, if they do get the ball, I think he's going to pump a high one. Beneath 22, Williams the pickup, Ellis the probing little kick, the bounce is crucial. Bryant was there, still in play, but finally, 
just space dwindling. And the ball out of play. Bryant already very much part of the bridge end effort. Well, no shortage of conversation between Kevin Phillips and his fellow forwards prior to the line out. So important that things should be well understood. Llewellyn got fingers to it but couldn't control it. It's still in play. Ellis, Williams. Well, that would be just a little bit too far, perhaps. In Gaelic football, it would have been some points, but here it's into Alan Edmonds' hands and a fine clearance. That was great play by Alan Edmonds. It was a difficult kick. Paul Corbin was good back. He didn't want the ball to bounce on the hard surface. Good play by number 11 Edmonds. Yeah, a little sm smile on his face, normally known as a try scorer, but not bad in defence either. Wayne Hall having difficulty in hearing. Owen Williams' commands, and Williams takes the little walk down towards his hooker. Again, three man at the line. And this is a chance for Bunt. Tremendous throw from Hall to find, to spot a man in midfield. Tremendous coordination between he and Bunt. Ellis Williams, a chance here. Webb just couldn't hold his footing. And Paul Williams, so cool, to just hold back. And then... That's out of play. Paul Williams, really, he's matured as an out in half, and he's not really acclaimed, but so efficient, and there, so much coolness. There's also a great play by Kevin Phillips, who went on the deck, sacrificed himself, got the ball to Paul Williams to clear. Wayne Hall this time, encouragement for his fellow forwards. As Bud this time re enters the line out rather late, just to make up the full complement. Again, Austin wants to force William uh, Phillips to throw it high. It's Williams that cleans up this time, though. It's not cleanly done. That's not with its usual efficiency, and indeed, that develops into something of a free-for-all, a pile-up in its true sense. And uh, no real shape or form to that ruck. Contest on this side of the scrum is between the Neath loose head Brian Williams and the bridge end tight head Paul Edwards. Paul Edwards with three on his back, and at the moment, no room for either Kevin Phillips or Jeremy Pugh. Really, it's a matter of uh, bad timing that they can't get down. Finally, do well coordinated as Edwards just trying to hold Williams in a stranglehold but penalised the front row. Hold it up, says the referee, till the ball comes in, keep it steady. It's a free kick, and yet again, Paul Thorburn. What a tremendous kicker of the ball he is. Tremendous length. And the coolest of customers. It was very interesting that Clive Norlin ran on to Wayne Hall then and said, that's what you're doing wrong in the scrum, holding it up. And it's good that the referee is telling the players what's gone wrong. Bridgen yet to call a full line out reluctant to expose all seven against Leith. Spender got fingers to that. Williams just about controlled it, but finally, again, out of space. Phillips, never a man to shirk responsibility, leads by example. This is the problem area as far as Bridgend are concerned, because in Kenbury, Llewellyn and Jones, Neath have three aces at the line-out. It's not tiny, but Austin, well, just unfortunate for the loose-head prop. He'd found the space, he had the pace, but now it's the other loose-head, Williams, he has pace as well, but intercepted by Wayne Hall, the hooker doing so well to get back there. Owen Williams is there as well, and good defending from Bridgen, but really forward as much to the fore in ball handling skills as backs at the moment. Great to see two loose heads running. First of all, David Austin on a tremendous surge, and when he lost the ball, we know what Brian Williams can do. He came away showing tremendous pace. So, Bridgend, a little variation in that Cowlock now is down at two. 
and Spender at four. Cowlock, his favourite position is the front of the line. Phillips aiming this time at Jones. But uh, couldn't quite control it, but Kembury has a chance then. Bridges chose the wrong route there. But still, Williams is there to play the scrum half roll. Roland Phillips is there, the support finding the shape of Glyn Flewellyn, still on its way. Bridges to Paul Williams. Paul Thorburn, for some reason, so close to the outside half. Can't quite hold it up. But, and indeed, Bridgen have won that. Parry, well, this is dangerous stuff. Bridgen did all sorts of bother there, but saved by Clive Norling's whistle. What a tackling midfield by John Apsey. Paul Thorburn, who's no, he's no slouch, and he's a big man, can tear him through, but John Apsey, who tore into him and just ripped the ball away from him. Neath winning second and third phase. Paul Williams, plenty of time. He says to the 15, have a go. Watch Apsi. In he goes. So strong. Rips the ball. Tigerish. Great tackling. Good mauling. Everything that's good in defence by Apsi. And Owen Williams, who was very much to the fore in that uh, defensive action, finally recovered. Just cleared the head. Back into the scrum. And it's back to work. That's the bridge end try line. Phillips already detached on the blind side. And that's been taken against the head, but Jones couldn't control that. Taken just a little bit by surprise. And a tremendous advantage lost there. A second bite of the cherry for Bridge End then. This time. That's far better. And what a good platform for Kevin Ellis, but he can't find touch. Thorburn decides that the high up and under is the best option. Adwell Parry is opposite number beneath it, and Parry, what a tremendous catch. Well, you don't do it any better than that, and no wonder Paul Thorburn shakes his hand. Magnificent play for the Bridgend fullback, never took his eye off the ball, very brave. And that's the way to clear lines. Kevin Elias tries to go for a long kick, doesn't get touch. Now, Paul Thorburn, one of the biggest kickers in the game, takes his time and he hoists a huge up and under. Parry, ever dependable, doesn't take his eye off the ball and claims a magnificent mark. Phillips, with all the options open, but this time the opponents do win it. Cowlock has tied that in. As Ellis and Williams then combine. The outside half, though, finding Jason Ball and the right winger with acres of space deciding that, well, a little bit of his past soccer skills coming into it, vision and timing, and just to settle things down inside opposition territory. against Western Samoa. Ellis, that's better from Bridgen. Ellis, so strong, so competitive, and again, this time he's found space. Edmonds has it, though. Decides he can run past one man. Superb work from the left winger. Incredible work from the left winger. And yet, well, it was all wasted. But the sleight of hand, quite amazing. No wonder that he has 45 tries to his credit this season. Pure magic by number 11, he'd left Glenn Webb, three or four men, he left in his wake, ball into touch the full, but what great le feet. It wasn't quite straight. Uh, closing the gap, says the referee as well, and so penalises Bridge End, or at least a free kick against them. And Kevin Phillips, we haven't seen the momentum generated from the knee forwards, from the short penalty today, as Thorburn aims that well. Had he had a slide rule and set it before kicking that goal, it would have been more accurate because that landed within inches of the corner flag. And this really again is what we saw in the 30 on Kevin Phillips had a throw in straight and 
very, very accurate. No bridge have to do the same because there's their line. The pressure back on Wayne Hall, back on Paul Cowlock and Nigel Spender. Michael Budd has detached himself and set himself on the try line. Cambry wins it, Roland Phillips the charge. But no to ground, says the referee, the ball not emerging and the scrum. But what a position for Neath. And knowing their strength in these situations, one would be surprised if a try didn't develop. Bridges, Jones, the posts, just there beckoning. And Williams having a little chat, but it's doubtful that the outside half will see this ball so early. I think the back row and the scrum half will want just to probe a little bit. Yes, I'm sure Mark Jones will want to say in this. If it's good ball, I'm sure we'll see him having a dash running at the likes of Alan Williams. Well, just a little difficulty. The front row, finally, they settle. Well, Neath can't drive that with the front row having stood up. Jones really driven back, and this is the work of the bridge end back row. But Morris emerges. Yes, he's gone. Well, out of nothing, and on the retreat, they still rescue it. And Martin Morris scores the game's opening try. Well, a tremendous moment for the flanker. As we thought, Mark Jones would have a go. Not a bad scrum. Fairly steady, up he goes, trying to take Alan Williams, he's taking number seven, he's taking Owen Williams, he's taking all the gen back row in, Matty Morris took the ball of him, again a good flanker, good determination, momentum took him over. The try scored it, Martin Morris, so at last the stalemate broken. Beneath kicker Paul Thorburn, the man to try and add. Two points to that Morris try. From 25 metres. And high and true. The fullback turns the try into a goal. And so then, with 23 minutes gone, which the cup holders take a six point lead. And I pretend to thought that they had stemmed the tide, but Matty Morris showing good alertness, ripped the ball away from his number eight, and there he goes, powers his over, just made it to the line. The responsibility on Parry to get his team back into the game, to get his forwards straight back into the action. Parry with a restart. It's just a little bit too far. That'll be protected and held up. Phillips, Roland that is, the expert, Bridges, again, so strong and determined, again well creamed as Phillips, the captain, takes it on, Morris, the try scorer, in the action again, Williams, the loose head, his hands just letting him down, and the referee will call them back. But that's an important, good kicking off is Admiral Parley there, fluffed his kick, Neath gained possession, and they tore back at Bridgen. Nice to be able to say that a loose head's hands let him down in, in surprise because we're so used to seeing Brian Williams these days so assured in his handling. And so he's good to get a grips at the scrum as well. Poised to engage Paul Edwards on this side of the scrum with Martin Morris just giving him support on the left-hand side. Ellis and Williams then. What can they conjure? The tester is for ball. Diplock timed his tackle, no, didn't quite time it, it was touch and go. Just a touch early, says the referee. The Gali Williams sent to the gist ball, spin out of position on the right wing, has put a few kicks there, but there was an early tackle, most definitely. Rolling just wants the 10 metres away, and this time Kevin Phillips wants to generate some momentum, no, quick change of mind. And it's back to Paul Thorburn, who then, in his usual manner, hoists a towering kick. This time, though, doesn't quite find touch. Paddy with a chance to repay that, and does so quite soundly. And that will just reassure the bridge and pull back of his touch. <laughs> 
15 minutes remaining of the first half. Six points, the difference. Morris and Bryant are the two at the back, the two sevens. Again, the outs and halves following a pattern. It's the high tester. Bateman had done so well there, but Williams has it covered. Alid Williams, that is. Although that ball again won by the Welsh All Blacks. Williams to Leite to Thorpe and a chance for Edmonds shows it. Webb two ways before finally getting Thorpe into the action. The captain is there as well. Kanith he sets it back. Edmonds at scrum half. Roland Phillips at outside half. This man is strong, determined. Again, it's on its way back. Williams playing the flanker role, the outside half, but that isn't clean properly. But Williams was offside. But Bud is strewn all over the pitch at the moment. Kevin Phillips injured, and so is Alan Edmonds. But tremendous driving. And little option for Owen Williams but to get hands on the ball just to prevent the momentum. Neath moving the ball backs and forwards. It could across field a little here. Out to Edmonds, who's got no real chance because the Virgin defence has come across, but he's looking for support on the inside, and that is where Neath are very good because 15 was there, and that's Kevin Phillips, and he'd been involved earlier in winning the ball, driven back, but always the ball is made available. They're willing to move it, and he can back in the midfield. Roland Phillips says, I'm straightening this up, I'm not going to go across field. He's pounding his way in there, goes down, waiting for the ruck ball to come back. Bridges is tackled by number seven. Again, the forwards there far quicker than Bridges. They're retreated. Owen Williams, quite rightly, offside, number eight. Well, the captain, in some distress, uh, was at the bottom of a driving bridge end ruck. And just a little careless foot, perhaps, on the side. But the captain won't leave the scene until all is lost. man who's already kicked two points for his club, Paul Forbin. His total for the season, 233 already. A chance to ease his team into a comfortable lead. Paul Forbin, an extra three points. No doubt about that. A man of his calibre doesn't miss from there. So his tally moves on to five and Neath to a nine-point lead. So, that little gap opening up between the two sides, Bridgen having defended so well, up now to Parry to get them back in the action. Arwell Parry to restart. 12 minutes remaining. It's high enough, Williams gets hands to it, that's excellently done. That's better, that'll encourage the forwards. Ellis standing off his butt. Ellis guarded by three, and that was too high, says the referee, as Ellis went for the gap. Very difficult to stop in that situation. But that was the difference when a good kick-off made. Paddy gave it plenty of height, let his forwards get under it, tapped it back, and they drove forward, and they, they, they get a penalty shot at goal. And Kevin Ellis just a little shaken in that tackle when the arm comes across the throat, just takes the wind a little bit, and the scrum half will need attention. Grant Fox used to do this with precision for the All Blacks. Look how high very important and he gets a hand to it and the forwards then number three can drive in to try and make the ball available they're in control Kevin Ellis goes on a little surge watch where it oh Kemri caught him quite high yes we did the, the number nine the scrum half so yes Clive Norling having a word in midfield for the bridge end players as well explaining some of his theories uh, Richard Diplock inquiring of something but certainly, one thing is certain, it's a penalty awarded to Bridge End. And I'll tell you, the most nervous man on the field will be Ar Arwell Parry, because he missed that very simple kick. He needs to kick this for, for Bridge End, certainly, and for his own confidence. The 400 points previously scored this season matter little here. It's, as they say, the one-off. And the points achieved today will mean far more than those 400. A chance for Parry to cut that deficit to just four, to six points. Parry, but again, well, really, it just proves what the big, big occasion can do for the nerves. Normally so assured, 
but really at the moment out of sorts. He never struck that ball at all, he snatched at it, he didn't follow through, and I watched him kick all season with such precision. Today, so far, very nervous in his kick in. And Paul Thorman decides to keep the pressure down the bridge end, end of the field, as Williams takes it back to Neath. The high test serve, but even a man as assured as Alec Williams just sometimes loses touch in there. That certainly won't be one that uh, pleased him straight out of play. Clive Nolling asking for a little light between the two lines. Kevin Phillips. Cambry is his main target in the, at the line-out. There, Cambry must have been impeded. It meant a free ball for Bridgen, but really Ellis won't thank them for a dreadful possession as Williams sets off outside Hall so easily. The pass not quite to hand, but this loose head prop forward is, is such a rare breed amongst the front row brigade. So eager as Bridgen take it quickly, but Cambry takes opposition possession. Williams sets Martin Morris, lovely timing to a tackle, sends the flanker right through a gap, reclaim it as well, as Bateman this time sends his space, Thorben is in it, the pass just behind Edmonds, can he keep it in play, but the pass is forward. Paul Williams very underrated at fly half underneath, superb, got the ball in midfield, he saw that Matty Morris was at his elbow, but it was a lovely time in from Paul Morris, put Matty, Paul Williams, put Matty Morris right through the gap, good play in number 10. The bridge end 22. As Ellis and his partner, Alan Williams, combine very efficiently indeed, just to take a little bit of pressure off the forwards. So, still nine points the difference, eight minutes remaining of the first half. The bridge end having missed two kickable penalties, which would have made such a difference. That's the man that. Uh, has ruled the line out so far and rules that one as well, although Spender this time is able to come through and that will mean that someone will be given a ticking to for not blocking at the line out. Thorburn, so assured, puts it straight back, the pressure back on Paddy. This time the bridge end at fullback. Well, decides to run. Has, there is a lot of space there, but he's run straight into opposition tacklers when there were people free and Ben really had very little option but to rescue that, but so many people free on the left, and unfortunately for Bridgen, the fullback decided to go straight ahead. Admiral Paddy had a lot of men on his left-hand side, but he thought he'd attack down the centre of the field, and he goes into a crunching tackle from Paul Thorburn. The ball's loose, he's taken the wrong option, and there's where the offside occurs. So, the crowd sunning themselves and enjoying themselves the weather is the kindest of all the fair being produced here by these two teams is exciting frustful competitive and perhaps nine points the difference not indicative of the effort put into the game so far so a little bit of attention required by the Neath players and Paul Thorburn prepares to kick for goal. Oh, oh, what a blow this would be for Bridget. Paddy has missed two kicks at goal. If Paul Thorburn would have slammed this over, the heads might really drop. A man who is so used to kicking goals under pressure, and one thinks back of Scotland here at the National Stadium for Wales, the Rotorua in Wales's victory in the World Cup over Australia. And for him, then, this should prove relatively straightforward. Still, Roland Phillips requiring just a little bit of attention. He's proved a tremendous influence. The fact that he can hold up the ball for his fellow players makes such a difference, Phil Bennett. I think they're a perfect pair, Martin Morris and Roland Phillips. Roland Phillips not so quick, but very strong, stays in his feet, great mauler. And then Martin Morris, the flyer, who gets around the park. Paul Thorman. In practice on Thursday evening, he hardly missed in an hour's practice. Thorburn, the chance to increase that lead to 12. 
but this time the hat just came across that the balance wasn't quite right and the ball just drawn that's the national coach and the Neath manager of course Ron Waldron just a little concerned perhaps the fluidity of the pass not quite there at the moment as Alan Williams wants to get his forwards back into the action Owen Williams fingers to it but did he nudge it forward the referee waiting for advantage and it doesn't accrue and it will be a neat scrum. The Neath three quarters just lying deeply. We haven't seen a great deal of them thus far. You just watch how tightly the bridge end three quarters guard that scrum. Bridges has already looked into the box, but this time decides Paul Williams, interestingly poised on that blind side, hoisted into the middle. Bateman early to the ball, so was Parry. The chance flips, the pass up quite right for Leite. He stumbles, recovers well. It's too much time, really. And Bridgen need to pressurise more than that as Williams finally gets it back. There's lots of space out wide as Thorburn releases Williams. He attacks Diplock. The timing is perfect. Edmonds is there. The slap from Bateman. What a superb tackle from Kevin Ellis. That's incredible. The scrum half, tremendous tackle. Still, it's alive, though. It's into midfield. Williams, the long pass to Edmonds. Leite, not quite the pace, perhaps, we found on the wing. Thorburn on the retreat. But tremendous tackling work from the bridge end flanker. But Thorburn somehow has kept the ball alive. Bridges the thrust, still on his feet. Finally, lays it back. The drive still goes on in the shape of Williams. Now it's Bateman at scrum half. They're standing there. There's Beeson Ball. Drops the goal. Just a little out of position, but there, Jason Ball, equal to the goal, just had one little look at the post, and the drop goal, so assured. Neath winning so much good ball, Paul Thorburn in the movement, lately tackled, for me, Paul Thorburn created this, because he was strong enough to stay in his feet, two Bridgen, three Bridgen players, trying to win the ball from him, very strong, when it comes out, Bridges goes on a little dash. They're all looking to breach the defence. Good defence by Bridgend. But when it comes, Jason Ball, great footballer, comes in, enough of going across the field, slots over, and easy three points. There's where you can see Neath moving the ball, always looking to keep it alive. And Leite doesn't die with the ball, strong enough to stay in his feet. Paul Thorburn there backing up, and this is a very hot day, and these forwards are tearing around the field 100 miles an hour. Thorburn saying, yeah, I'll make it available for you. Everybody have a little crack at it. Bridges have a little go. There, the ball is taken down. Good play. Bateman's gone and scrum off. Jason Ball coming away from the right wing, slots it over brilliantly, takes his chance. There's three easy points. Bridgen from the restart, again offered the chance to drive it on. This is Wayne Hall. Ellis has spotted that space behind Edmonds. That ball will run away from the winger. Just well, a foot in touch, and that will be the advantage of Bridgen as well. Valiant effort from Edmonds to try and keep it in play, but just the foot touching the line, and that yields a tremendous position. Uh, what can Kevin Ellis conjure from this line out? This is a crucial period for Bridgen. They, they need some kind of score here, whether a drop goal or a try. Something desperate to get back into this game. Really desperate that Bridgen win possession here. Hall the aim, but Kenbury wins it. The sweeping done so efficiently again. And Bridges finally has to go in a little tighter than he would have wanted. But again, the efficiency of that half back combination. To the four. Still the advantage with Bridgen as Clive Norling wants Paul Cowlock just to yield half a yard. Allow a little light between himself and Glyn Shewellyn. Well, this is Bridgen possession. Kevin Ellis has found a little gap. Again, they drive it through. Ellis there poised, Wayne Hall just standing off, he'll go in and try and help claim that, but that's not tidy possession. Still, Michael Budd makes a beeline for the line. This is good pressure from Bridgen, but finally to ground. But this is a good platform, the scrum will be theirs, and the try line will in sight. 
And if Morelli, if James' uh, coaching sessions are to be leave, the scrimmaging has, has been superb, apparently. He'll pose problems for Mark Jones and the flankers, whether they get up. Watch for beneath number six on this side, Roland Phillips. See whether he detaches early or stays down. He detaches. Needs to guard this blind side. Alan Edmonds just a little bit exposed there, perhaps, and Glenn Webb would be keen to get a little pass in there. Yes, I think good quick ball here, and it's almost impossible to stop Glenn Webb or Ellis going in. Ellis, he spotted the gap, the slant is from Glenn Webb, the support is there as well. Bridgen driving for that line, can they now reclaim that ball? Slowly, no, it doesn't emerge, and really frustration for them. It really is a good period of pressure for them, but the Neath defence so far just holding fast into time added on for injury beneath try line well this is a chance for Ellis yes well what a chance how quickly he took that the reflexes so quick the ball out of control but down was Ellis into the hands away they go the try was there. Very quick channel one ball, out quick as a flash, and Bridgen's best player, very strong, just shrugs off the tackle and makes the line. Arwell Parry. What a moment for him. chance to add two points to that Ellis try but yet again just away across an Arwell Parry well we'll want to forget the first half at least because two penalties and conversion could have made such a difference but still the difference now is just eight points and Bridge End breathe rather easily Kevin Ellis quick as a flash before the Bridge End back row could blink and he just made his way over the line. The long restart from Thorburn. Very long indeed. And it'll be back to the 22. While the forwards will be very glad of a break when Clive Norling finally decides on half time because it's hot, tremendously hot, and the pace really has been fearsome. Alan Williams. Desperately needs to get his forwards back into the play. Owen Williams was making strides towards it, but just a little bit too far, which means that Neath were able to hold up that quite nicely. Kevin Phillips is there burrowing. A chance again, Colin Leighty, very nearly outside. Lovely pass from Leighty. Bateman has found a little gap, but good hands from the centre. Edmonds just fails to get away from Parry, and finally rescued by Apsi. And Clive Norling whistles for half-time. With a scoreline here of the cup holders, Neath 12, the challengers bridge end four, and uh, deservedly, deservedly so, Phil Bennett? Yes, just about, but bridge will be kicking themselves. Paddy's not been in good form with his boot, he could have kept him in the game. Kembury's posing huge problems, they can't win any line out ball, but that score just before half time was just the boost they wanted, bridge end. So, those are the views of Phil Bennett. We'll just go across to Alan Wilkins and John J. Williams. Well, John, before the match, you were saying that you wanted to see a game of rugby football. Is, uh, has the game lived up to your expectations? It certainly has, Alan. It, it, it's full of excitement, it's full of movement. It's just what we want, it's just what the crowd want to see. It's a good game. 12 for the half time score. How do you assess uh, Bridgen's performance in that first half? Well, they started off with a bang and uh, they missed uh, an easy three points in the first 10 minutes, which, they, which was vital. Our old Paddy missed the penalty. But after slipping 12 0 down, I thought that they might. The game might be slipping away from them, but to be fair, and they showed character, they've bounced straight back into it. Well, the first try came about, uh, John, after 21 minutes. It was scored by Neath uh, through their flanker, Martin Morris. Yes, here it is. Uh, Neath uh, this time, put a lot of pressure onto the uh, Bridgen line, and uh, Marjo was picked up from the scrum, even though he was driven back by Mike Bird. He still managed to stay on his feet, and then the scrum turned the wrong way, the mall turned the wrong way for Bridgen, and Martin Morris had an easy run in. No, well, did he ground it or did he struggle over? But, well, good try. He's played well, in fact, Marty Morris. 
yes, the Neath uh, back overall superiority, but uh, right at the end of that first half, John, consolation for Bajen. Well, it certainly was. You know, this shows the character. They bounced straight back, 12 nil downs, good scrimmage. They worked in the scrimmage, as we said before the game. Kevin Ellis picks up a channel well ball and goes for it. Another good try. He's a tireless worker, Kevin Ellis, isn't he? He's, he's been the man of the match away. for me, for, for Bridgen. He's, he's tackled, he's, he's tackled the forwards, been under pressure. They haven't won a lot of line-up, but the tackling that man has done has been tremendous. He's kept Bridgen in the game. It's not uh, from without of their reach, would you say that? Not now, it isn't. It, uh, it was beginning to be when they were 12 million down, but this four, uh, four points now has put them right back in. But they mustn't keep missing these vital penalties. It's the three points, they must get them over. Arrowell, of course, will have a think about that. He's the leading point scorer in Wales this season. Perhaps uh, a bit of nerves? Well, we said that before the game. Oh, you either crack up or you perform, you know. And uh, he's either very, very good or he's very, very poor in his kicking, you know. But, uh, but Bridgen is still in it. They've been talking to each other. They're not overall by the occasion. They've been tackling well, but they've got to win some line of ball because to defend out there in that heat is going to be tough going. They must win the ball to do some attacking. Neath have kept uh, coming at Bridgen, but Bridgen have withstood, withstood that onslaught, haven't they? Yeah, you know, it's... Uh, they, 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 they're tackling, especially through Kevin Ellis in the back row has been superb. But they've got to win this line of ball. Now just Fenner and Carlock have now got to win some ball. Well, uh, just before we go into the second half, news from Twickenham for the Pilkington Cup final there, the all Southwest uh, country final. Bath 25, Gloucester 0. That's uh, quite a surprising scoreline, that, in the Pilkington Cup final. Back here at the National Ground, Cardiff Arms Park, it's Neath. 12, Bridgen 4, that's the half-time score. Second half now, Phil Bennett and Lynn Davis. Thank you, Alan, and just a quick word from you, Phil, before we restart. John Absey would have been in amongst his players there. What message can he possibly have? Well, I think, honestly, what he's got to say is that if we win ball, we must move it because the, the, the Neath pack started to get stronger and stronger, and I'm sure they've got to use Diplock and Webb on the wings. Well, there is a substitution on the Neath side, by the way. Number 16 is David Joseph, and he's on the field in place of Jeremy Pugh. So one change as we prepare to restart. Clive Norling whistles, Thorburn responds, and the second half is underway with the bridge end, eight points adrift. Adwell Parry, nice touch of confidence, and that's a tremendous opening for the fullback. Just a little bit shaky at times when he came to place kicking the first half, but really with the ball in his hands has been very assured indeed. So Kevin Phillips, quite happy out of thought with that advantage, although a difficult man to please, and he'll want to drive that advantage home, wants his players up to the mark. Derek Bevan just behind him, international panel referee. Six is Roland Phillips for Neath, eight is Mark Jones, he's the man that wins it. Brian Williams has a goal playing scrum half, the other Williams, Paul, won't thank him, although he's found a little gap and exploits it. Such a competitor, so eager to take on people twice his size. The momentum just lost for a second there, unless Neath now reclaim it. Finally, too slow for the referee, loses patience, wants them to scrum down and to have a little order. Crowd scenes more reminiscent of the Southern Hemisphere here. That's the supporters. T-shirts is the order of the day. Face cream as the Bridges puts in that little tester for Arwell Parry. But uh, those won't bother. The bridge end fullback enjoys those testers. Good positioning sense and up to the situation there. Second minute then of the second half. Neath in the lead in this Shops Cup final as Kembury, as Phil Bennett said at half time, just ruled the roost at that line out. And a tremendous example there. It offers his team a little bit of extra yardage to on which to drive onto. The tester again, Bateman was that timing, but Morris is there. Such strength from his flanker. They drive it on, it's on its way, but just nudge forward. Really, the anticipation is tremendous amongst the Leeds players. I believe there that Bateman took Parry out to the game there. Maybe not intentionally, but certainly hit the full-back without the ball. And Admiral Parry 
on the receiving end of a, a little bit of tackle, shaken up, but uh, sure to soon recover. Paul Williams persisting with a high kick in. It's not a particularly good one, but Bateman does very well. Speed there, bam, took Parry out without the ball. I'm sure that was a penalty. It's, a, it's not the greatest kick, but Bateman is so quick, he makes it into a good kick. Parry, so brave, doesn't take his eye off the ball. There's where I felt Bateman took him clearly before the ball got anywhere near him, but Mr Nolan said, play on. So, Arwell Parry recovered. And it's back to a defensive position because the bridge end line is there in sight for Neath. Although the advantage will go with the defending side. Interesting that Martin Morris is on that far side, which is tying up the blind side, Roland Phillips on this, the right hand side. As Ellis takes the responsibility. And if anyone on that bridge end side deserves a little encouragement, it's that man, number nine, Kevin Ellis. And there's the captain again. Yes, really, everyone else can hear the commands of the lineout. It's uh, surprising that these fellow forwards are finding it difficult. It really is opening up his lungs. Kembury and Jones, between them, are able to rescue that. And then the roll comes on. The front row yet again to the fore. Williams, although he hasn't been able to clear that, his captain tries to rescue him. And David Joseph, the substitute, doing the creaming work at that ruck, just going in front of the ball, keeping people away from it. Good tackling by Mike Budd, number seven there. As Brian Williams came forward, looking to set up the rolling ball, he drove him back, Mike Budd. David Joseph, 16 on his back, what a character. Can play either side of the scrum, so a useful replacement as a prop. Wayne Hall has done his work. It's the bridge end, 22, and with Ellis just inside. He's able to kick directly into touch. Michael Budd and Martin Morris at the back, the two sevens. And Mark Jones and Owen Williams just in front of them, the two numbers eight. But Cambry, five, has been the key man. It's Jones that time, though. For a possession, and there's a little bit of a scramble going on just off the ball between Cambry. Gen forwards, and all the result it's uh, David Austin. And the good thing is now that Simon Clive Bryant, Nor Clive Norley can go and have a chat with the test set to see exactly what went on because he followed the ball. Uh, a little bit of nudging going on, and uh, really with Cambry being such a force at the line out, with Gen perhaps having to resort to one or two tactics that aren't quite legitimate, and Cambry taking exception to that. Still, he's quite content with life. There'll be a little ticking off. It wasn't really serious, it was just a little. Wrestle. I'm sure there's a Neath man who infringed because uh, he may have retaliated Kembury, but uh, I think they, are you correctly say, they're taking the big man out in the line out. Norlin say any, any more of that and you won't see Nabibia. <laughs> well, the Giant concedes a penalty, makes the necessary 10 metres away as Neath take up the challenge. Williams puts the ball in front of his forwards. Kembury is back in the action, but that's gone. Bridgen's way, if they can, but they can't. No, the ball had been nudged forward. The advantage, though, remains Bridgen's. On this side of the scrum, it's David Austin, who first came to prominence when Bridgen beat Wales at the Brewery Field. He's up against David Joseph in this, the second half. And again, this young scrum half, Kevin Ellis, really is enjoying this occasion of Big time man and showing all his skills. He's been Bridgen's outstanding player so far this afternoon. Well, Neath's three quarters still lying deep at this line out, so they're intent on perhaps running it even from deep positions. 
Paul Edwards back towards the back of that line at the tight head prop forward, which means that uh, Owen Williams has gone down the front just to try and prevent that flow of neat lineup possession. But that bridges Williams combination again. So efficient. This time Williams hasn't found touch, sets Glenn Webb off on a little run. And that, if that lands just outside the 22, unfortunately, it's just half a yard too far. The fair catch wouldn't have been allowed, but as it was, it was there. And Chris Bridges stood his ground, kept his head, and finally makes absolutely sure that the ball goes over the touchline. Eight minutes gone, eight points the difference. Hall, free catch for Mark Jones. Roland Phillips, people bouncing off him. He really is such a forceful player. A little bit of offside in the bridge and three quarters, perhaps, as Mark Jones then takes those people out of play. The passing isn't quite right, and perhaps that's the reason why Paul Williams finally decides that the kick is the right option. So the pressure back on Bridge End. Cambry will try and prevent possession this time around. As Hall, a little walk, a little chat, just to make sure. It really is a tight situation. Eight points the difference. It really has to be tight and disciplined. That's tremendous leaping from Cowlock. That is good stuff. The control there as well. Ellis wants people taken out of the way. Well, Bridgend so confident that they even begin to drive this upfield. Ellis has had a little look to see where Alid Williams is positioned, but doesn't need the assistance of his half-back partner, the captain, the scrum half, rather with time and space, able to clear his lines. That was good play by Bridgen. First of all, Cowlock with a superb leap in the line out, the driving ball, and Kevin Ellis yet again rewarding him by gaining a 30-metre touch. So a little treatment for the Bridgen hooker, Wayne Hall. And really, no wonder the forwards are flagging. It's so hot here. And just indications of the weather conditions here. Not a cloud in the sky, hardly a flutter from those banners and flags high in the stand. Hall is back into the action. Kevin Phillips, half an hour away from lifting that Schweppes Cup for the second successive time. Eight points the difference. Needs to find Kembry. Kembry, just the little fingertip touch to Williams on the retreat. Bateman this time, well, it's not the most accurate kick. And Glenn, Glenn Webb has the chance. Can he keep it in play? Parry in support. Once Bridgen players there in greater numbers. It's been rescued by Phillips. Bridges has spotted space. This is Bateman again. Lovely little play from the centre, supported by Paul Williams. Jason Ball had gone on a slanting run, so the support wasn't there outside. And finally, very little option for Kevin Ellis, but to side put that ball away. It's a great pity there that Paul Williams didn't flick the inside pass from Jason Ball. There's a huge gap open, but he's probably contented. He's put beneath five metres on the Bridgen line. It's been quickly taken. And a little bit of indecision between the forwards and the scrum half quite knowing whose responsibility it was. Finally, no doubting the responsibility here. The prop, Brian Williams, goes straight ahead. As he'll never tire, right up to the very end. Before training on Thursday, he'd been shearing 200 sheep. And then it was the final training session before a cup final. Just watch Roland Phillips, detached on this side of the scrum but it wasn't altogether efficiently done and a chance lost. What great play game by Kevin Ellis. Go in there to rob them the ball. So strong, so determined. The Bridgen number nine.
This bridge end scrum needs to be very solid, needs to offer Ellis and Williams a solid platform. Ellis offered that, but hasn't quite found touch. Well, Paul Thorman, for once, his hands not quite as assured as usual, just taking his eye off the ball at the final second, perhaps, and a little slip from the international fullback. Cowlock and Williams against Llewellyn and Jones. Cowlock finally, you know, what quick hands from Ellis. And Ellis does it well. Bryant had stopped really before arriving at the knee of tacklers, which meant that there was no real thrust there, although he's been rescued by some illegal use of the hands on the ground at that wreck. But the difference between the technique of Bryant and the technique of the knee forwards there quite apparent. Ellis again, there is space, out wide, Apsi, taken up by Leite with the kick into space, but Bridges in true classical scrum half mould, across behind the three quarters, doing the sweeping job, and saves his side. Both scrum halves have covered very well this afternoon, but I think if Bridget have to stretch Neath, they've got to move it to the likes of Diplock and Webb on the outsides. Again, Paul, just a little difficulty in hearing the signal. Well, they do win it this time, and it's Ellis's turn to hoist the testing up and under. Lands in a free-for-all situation, and, well, the decision is that the ball was knocked forward by Neath. The scrum and the advantage will go to Bridge End. That's how close Bridge End are to... The opponent's try line, goalpost to the left, corner flag to the right. A little bit of a gap on that blind side. Just watch number six, Roland Phillips. He's already detached, very nearly standing off that scrum. Finally re enters, but he'll be away rather. There he is, and Mark Jones, they're filling in that little gap. Alan Williams with a drop kick at goal. Yes, the outside half succeeds and throws the game into. A little greater turmoil because it closes the gap to just five points. The outside half so quick, so assured, and three points to him. And it's now seven to Bridge M, uh, 12 to Neath. Good play by Ali Williams because the Neath backs were up very flat, got the ball, not a great angle to aim for, but st struck it beautifully. And that's just what Bridge M needed. They're back in the game. The long restart, and Paddy content to just hold it up. Luke Evans wants it delivered quite quickly, but Paddy has spotted some space. He's got players, no, they just about got behind him. But Paul Williams had anticipated that the outside half. Well, good support though from Bridges. He spotted space just behind the bridge end, three quarters. And again, these neat half backs, they really shown tremendous poise, tremendous control, and as we saw in last year's final, the man in the hot seat, Chris Bridges, always up to the task. And when he put that 50-metre kick in there, you could see the Bridgen forwards trundling back, that was heartbreaking, soul-destroying for them. Tremendous play by the Neath half-backs. For Wayne Hall, Cowlock has to be his only option if they're to be assured of possession in this defensive position. Owen Williams takes advantage of a little loose delivery. Good driving on by Bridgen, the referee playing advantage, finally decides that uh, it wasn't going Bridgen's way. So, offside and a penalty. Disappointed feature, Kembry tapped the ball back, won it for, for Neath, but huge gaps in the line that allowed Owen Williams to pour through. Aled Williams, a chance to further punish Neath. And the outside half again. Well, the confidence restored with that drop goal. And assured touch finder.
Kevin Ellis and Chris Bridges, the two scrum halves, just in picture. Clive Gawling taking up position towards the back, just to see how cleanly the ball is won, and decides that there was some closing of the gap. Lots of jumping across and closing of gaps at that line-out. Very interesting, we haven't seen the Thunder Miles style so far this afternoon, it was very hot out there. I think Kevin Felice is saying, let's get down there, let's conserve our energy. And that's the message yet again, as Thorburn drills a kick right into the corner, but this time it wasn't quite made to measure, he was just the merest fraction out. Alan Williams to decide just five points adrift. Mark Jones unopposed, but couldn't quite grasp it and control it. And it's offered Bridge End a chance to drive away, although David Austin immediately isolated. And well, Canberra will be penalised here. Les Peart will point, and this is a dangerous position. And that's the second warning for Kemri. He was warned earlier on. There was nothing vicious in there, but he did put a boot in, I think, on somebody's legs. Very well, interesting decision going to be made here. Because Phil Bennett did the yes. Well, it is. There was no option. He put a foot in at that wreck. And it was spotted by Les Beard. And Andrew Kemri, having previously received a warning, now finds himself, as Phil Bennett warned him earlier on, not making the trip to Namibia. Oh, this is tragic for the young number five. I don't think there was anything vicious in there, but certainly put a boot in there. Well, drama here, when things seem to be in control as far as Neath are concerned. Let's watch very carefully. Austin's been taken. He's down on the ground. I can't... There's where his boot goes in. I don't think it went near his head or so, but he's definitely stepping on legs and bodies. Having been worn once, I suppose there was no other option. Off he's gone. There he is, number five. Keep an eye very carefully. He's been worn once. Coming into it here. There's where his left leg goes in, and he's stepping on pretend bodies on the ground. Well, as Aled Williams drives that kick at the touchline, it really sets up the final quarter. 20 minutes to go. Neath down to 14 men. Five points the difference. What can the challengers mount in these final minutes? Kembury, the man sent off for stamping. And now the responsibility on captain Kevin Phillips to hold his side together. Denied their, mind, their main line-out. Forward. They still win that and still clear their lines. What will Bridgen do? How can they exploit that little weakness? They've been denied so much line-up possession by Kembry's presence. Now he's gone. It's noticeable that Mark Jones has gone to jump in the middle of the line for me. And Jones is the man that takes over the mantle, but he was being supported illegally, and the gap was being closed too early. If I was Bridgend, yeah, quick ball out to Alan Williams, and I'd have a crack at another drop goal. It is to Alan Williams, but that won't threaten the post. But Edmonds and Thorburn between them make a mess of that, and Thorburn tackled by Apsi Bridgend on the rampage. They need possession, desperately need possession, but it won't come, but they retain possession and the advantage. Just watch the reaction of the two locks, Spender and Cowler, as if they'd scored a try there, just in keeping possession at the scrum. Now, let's remember, Neath, a man short in the scrum, but any change of the scrimmage in all this week, let's have a look for the, the second drive. Ellis, the dummy run, wants an offside decision. Owen Williams decides that the strength is there, the support is there. Bryant and Ellis together. Bridge end, drive it on. The ball doesn't emerge. If ever Kevin Phillips needed to lead his team by example, it's here now. But I'll be amazed if Bridge end don't go for the second Chevy. I think they've got the beating of Neath in the scrum. Ellis on a dummy run, maybe, and then drive over for the second show. The intensity of feeling in that Bridge end pack at the moment is amazing. Austin and company gene one another up as Alan Williams drops a goal, gets his second successful kick at goal. Six points to the outside half. 
cuts the deficit to two points, and this cup final is suddenly alive. Bridge N10, Neath 12. Good scrimmage over the Neath forwards, denied Bridge N the chance. Bradley Williams, all the time in the world. There's no easier way than getting three points and to punish Neath. Solid play, good control by Owen Williams. That's what makes it so easy for Kevin Ellis to rifle the pass out. There's nothing on behind the scrum, so Williams says, thank you very much, we'll have three points. Well, David Austin needs some treatment, really, just before that scrum. The way he and his fellow forwards went into it, spoke volumes as to the way their spirits had been uplifted with that sending off. Isn't it amazing how the pressure told on Neath where, when Edmonds and Thorburn, normally so safe, crumbled that ball? Well, Neath won the cup last season by one, a one-point margin. Very interesting that Clyde Nall is going on to talk to Wayne Nall and he's saying, look, there are men on the touchline come in with some water, there's only one man to come on and give you refreshments when somebody's injured. So, Thorburn, the restart. That's long and ragged into no man's land, and Paul Thorburn will be very annoyed with himself. But he forwards as well as Ellis drives it back upfield. Webb is in pursuit, but Williams, with all the time in the world, to just set his store and just put the end to the nonsense. And that's taking a bit of pressure on Paul Thorburn because he was annoyed with himself. That was a poor kick. He didn't gain any. He gave Ellis all the time in the world to put his 70 or 80 metres. The outside half Williams did well to retrieve the situation. Interesting that Spender is at the back now, just covered by Mike Budd. But Owen Williams, so many, so much chopping and changing by Bridge End at the line out. Owen Williams down at the middle, and it's he that, well, very nearly won it, but it's taken on by Spender. Ellis again helping the referee. Desperate tugging, wrestling, as finally they come away in the shape of Austin. Uh, this is Bridge End really on the rampage? They're taking the game to Neath, they're playing Neath at their own game, and Ellis then the testers. Thorburn has to stand his ground, and perhaps in that situation, with Neath on the rack, another tackle should have been forced. Quite right, yes, it was a poor kick from Ellis, giving Thorburn all the time in the world, but tremendous play for the Bridge End forwards. That little bit of thrust gone to waste, and Ellis just holding his head there. The ball should have been kept to hand, Neath made to tackle. That's where the pressure tells. Concerned face of Kevin Phillips, beneath his captain. A comfortable lead at one time of eight points, now dwindled to two. Hall. Bud scavenging at the back, so was Bryant. But uh, referee not satisfied with the line out. noticeable now that Owen Williams has left the scrum and is now behind his, his backs. <laughs> Playing as the libero in Italian soccer parlance. There's Owen Williams there, standing back, a little sweeper, watching for any back row moves from, from Neath. But Neath don't try to run into that situation. It's the high tester, Webb. Paddy make a huge mess of that. Martin Morris very nearly offered a kind bounce as well, just to drive home further that uh, free ball off it. Very sloppy play by Glenn Webb and Adwell Paddy. It should have been Paddy's ball. He was coming forward. He's annoyed. It should have been his ball. And Paul Thorburn is standing directly behind the Neath scrum. I'm sure we're going to see a skyscraper here. And that Neath scrum just a little bit under pressure. It can't be controlled, it can't be held, they've been pushed off it. Chance for Williams to drive off, but the referee decides, much to the disappointment of Williams, his teammates and the bridge and supporters, they call back to square one. And Roland Phillips finally joins, ticks up the number eight position at the scrum. No open side flanker. And Kevin Ellis again, just assisting the referee. Bridges. Paul Williams again, 
really took his time, had a very long look at where the space was, and then no pressure at all, picks his spot, drives it home, and offers his forwards a very good platform yet again. This has to be tight. Cowlock again will be the main target. Williams really showing prowess in that middle line role. The kick from Ellis yet again rewards Williams and his fellow forwards for some tremendous control line out work. That's the big difference the Cambrys made. Now they're winning some line out ball, and Ellis is planting it in front of them. That could be the turning point of the match. Again, there's a sweeper out in midfield. Well, suddenly, yeah, not quite as assured as they were, the need supporters. Suddenly, just a little doubt. Bryant is out in midfield for this line-out, just to plug what gaps there might be. <laughs> Roland Phillips, though, wants to set things going forward. Again, Williams is positioned on the blind side. That isn't far enough ahead of his forwards. The ball is a free win for Simon Bryant. Can he now get support? The ball driven on. And the ref, yes, it is still going on. But Bridges, well, it's just becoming a little untidy. Things happening rather hurriedly as Diplock wins it. And Arwell Parry, that's a fine kick. That put drives Paul Forbin back into the corner. And with no angle at all, well, that's a remarkable kick. Well, that's amazing. Seldom have I ever seen a kick on that shape because really he had no angle at all. Kicked with his right foot, the nearest foot, and somehow the ball swerved in field and then out again. Well, if need survive, there'll be a huge thank you for that kick because Neath were under pressure, but the fullback. Really tremendous work. Chance again. This is Bateman. A lovely little angle from the centre. It's really opened up the heart of that bridge end defence. Regained again. Roland Phillips. Just holding on to it. A second too long. A little space here. Jason Ball needs support on the inside. Clever running from the winger. Knew that there was no space out, out wide. Neath trying to reclaim it, but the number's not there just to clean it properly. And David Austin to save the day. And it's great to see the ball in the hands for a change. And some nice side seven by Jason Ball. Kevin Phillips has taken it. It's with Bridges. It's into midfield. Bateman again looks for a little gap. Gets the pass in. What a tremendous tackle this time by Glenn Webb and Colin Leighty. Really, the bridge and defence had a stretch, but still holding its ground. Glenn Webb did well, uh, half gap by Bateman, he was through, put lately in the space, but Webb came in and crushed him down. Treatment required for a bridge end player. Glenn Webb in that tackle, perhaps just a little shaken, but bridge end there at full stretch. And uh, up to it, no question. Amazingly, Kevin Phillips took this, nobody was looked at all, walk in, only Mr Norley was on alert. Watch for this half-break by Bateman, lovely, just gets the pass in there beautifully, but as Leite gets hit, bang, in comes Webb and takes him down. Marty Morris there to support, but great tackling by the bridge end right wing. So just nine minutes remaining of this game, the 1990 Schweppes Cup final. Two points the difference, really couldn't be more finely poised. And the next score well be the clinship and do take Neath just a little bit out of reach. Those are the some of the younger element, the players of the future, the Neath supporters. It's Michael Budd receiving treatment and he's really had a, a tremendous game, been here, there and everywhere. It hasn't been a classic, you know, and the handling and the kicking hasn't been in this order, but one has to say it's scorching out of there and those players must be absolutely exhausted. Well, these situations are tailor-made for 
Bridges, Williams and company. Williams this time decides that it's a kick towards the post. Bateman very nearly times it perfectly, but the escape comes in the shape of Paddy. And the fullback, well, something on his side at least. And what good saving defensive work from Adwell Paddy. Williams just slowly getting to his pivotal role. Perfect kick by Williams there. Bateman speed, isn't it? So fast. Llewellyn is the target, but Cowlock wins it. Williams cleans it. Ellis to Williams into midfield. Luke Evans looks for a little gap, but really, Neath tend to close up those gaps so quickly. Bridges on the retreat. Jason Ball has spotted a little space. Well, that was. Just a little debatable, Lesbian was there and decides that the ball landed on the line itself, but very nearly perfectly done. Assured in his decision, Lesbian who's back to the mark straight away. The bridge end forwards, not involved in the line, just poised blindside. Jones palms it, but... It off his free ball, but no, nope, too quickly through. Closing it. Paul Thorburn then. Much to the relief of the bridge end, or the Neath forwards rather, will drive it downfield and they'll be offered a leisurely walk to the line out. Again, it's a huge kick, but it hasn't found touch. Adwell Paddy. Kevin Ellis pointing to the wide open spaces far side of the field, but the fullback deciding that no, not at this stage will we perform heroics. Let's try and form a platform in opposition territory. Paul Thorburn would be disappointed there for a man of his class. He should put that ball safe into touch and take the pressure off his forwards. We enter the final five minutes. Kevin Phillips. And again, nudging Paul Edwards. The prop protests, but to no avail. I'll bet you all the money in the world that Paul Thorburn will put this safely into touch because Kevin Phillips has said, look, we're not going to run 50 or 60 metres. We want to get down there, take our time. And Clive Norlin goes and has a little word with the bridge end prop. Make sure that he's 10 metres away as well. And this time, that is rifled into the corner. He must have listened to you, Phil Bennett. That was a beauty. That's, that's what you expect from a man of his class. This is where Bridgen will be on the rack. The goalpost there in the background. The final minutes, concentration, tiredness, affecting everything. Cowlock at the front. Fails to get hands on that. And it means that Roland Phillips now tries to set things rolling. Kevin Phillips as well. And Glenn Thewellen, they're all there. They want to probe either side. Those soft spots left and right of them all. In there is Paul Williams, the outside half as well. There's Martin Morris, Paul Thorburn. They're all coming up beneath. The ball finally pops out, but really there's no one out there as far as the three quarters are concerned. Beatman then to Thorburn, the fullback inside. They're queuing up, but they can't score a try. It was nudged forward when that try really. <laughs> Brian Williams, yes, can't believe his ill luck. That was amazing in that moment. Bridges was in there, Paul Williams was in there. Thorburn came up for full back. If Bridgen had won the ball, there'd be nobody left there to defend. Paul Edwards in some difficulty trying to get into that spot. Brian Williams. Kevin Phillips, finally, Brian Clive Norling wants them to detach and re-engage, finally succeeds, and the pressure here on the bridge end scrum. Ellis, so busy, looking for every little trick to try and induce an offside, but no, the scrum through 90 degrees. Ron Waldron, the Neath team manager, well, he'll be relieved to hear the final whistle with his team's advantage at just two points. Two and a half minutes to go. The bridge end try line. Just 
inches away from Owen Williams' feet. And that scrum move, that's a try. That is a try. Chris Bridges, last season's man of the match. This time a try. So quickly around and doing to Kevin Ellis what Ellis had done all afternoon to him. And Bridges eases his side into a six-point lead. Tremendous play by the beneath number nine, Chris Bridges. It's just loose ball, that's been second. He hurries Ellis into a mistake and he's got it and over. Vital for Neath. This has sealed the game. You'd think Bridget would have a solid platform with that man extra, but it's not quite controlled by Owen Williams. Ball goes loose, Bridges quick as a flash, regathers, and he's over the line. Injury replaced by David by David Joseph, but uh, he won't mind. The cut now seems to be in Neath's grasp. Paul Thorburn to further ease Neath's worries, but just missed that. And as Thorburn makes his way back with the scoreline here, reading Bridge N10, Neath 16. The news from Twickenham is that it's remarkable news. Bath have beaten Gloucester by 48 points to six, and that has to be a cup final record at Twickenham. Bath winners, yes, by 48 points to six against Gloucester. It's Alan Williams that restarts here. Bridge end, six points adrift. And the giant Jones grasps that, and there'll be no taking that away from the lead forwards. Captain Phillips is in there as well. Just watch Bridges' hands, poised to take that. The pass then would be one more, one movement, and finally, offside against Bridgen. They've been held and held and held, and those little dummies did great, the trick. Great control by the knee pack there. Kevin Phillips held the ball and caught it, the forwards offside. And just to prove that things are now under complete control. There were wavering moments halfway through the half when Bridgen were within sight with just two points of difference. But now it's six. Roland Phillips, the other Phillips was at his elbow, his captain. Now it's laid back. Paul Williams changes the tactics, not one iota. It's probing and... Oh, dear me. Well, what does luck do for the brave? Absolutely incredible. The young Samiro Paul Williams had another excellent game this afternoon. Put that ball on a sixpence. Bridget, desperate trouble, there's their line. How do they defend this? There has to be either a two-handed catch or someone doing a fine sweeping job if the ball is tapped. Hall again just having difficulty in hearing the signal, but it has to be either Cowlock or Williams. It can't be thrown longer than that. It is, and it offers Neath a free ball. Jones gathers a little bit on the retreat. Brian Williams makes sure that it's no further. It goes straight on. It's on its way. Bridges wants a second try. In there, look at Paul Williams, number 10, really playing the role of a flanker. And a little skirmish on the, on the ground as well as they quickly separated. And Clive Norning, having already sent one player off the field, will want a word, a stern word, with the two contestants in that little battle it's Mike Budd and Paul Williams uh, just explaining despite the fact that he's into time added on for injury still it's still an early bath if the final whistle hasn't gone where the character Paul Williams fly off wants to fight the fight flanker <laughs> most people run away from them first yes. what can this depleted Neath pack to with the scrum. And look who's in the pack, number 15, Paul Thorburn. No fullback there. Thorburn poised in the flanker role. Really, the space behind here. But now he's retreated. Still, the Neath forwards this time sent, but they have control. Roland Phillips. Can he get well? He was over, but he couldn't place it. And Luke Evans offered a chance. Hanwell Parry will restart on the 22, but Clive Norling wants them back to square one. The ball went forward as Roland Phillips tried to place the ball, so it'll be a scrum five, and that's something Bridgen don't want in that situation. Incredible letter for Bridgen. 
because Roland Phillips was over the line and lost the ball over the line, but what a tribute he needs fitness. Paul Williams has instructed Jason Ball to run back downfield to plug the gap in midfield. That's very quick possession. Alan Williams has found a little space. The ball still in field. Will Paul Thorburn drop kick the goal? No. He'll test his opposite number, Parry. That is a tester, but Parry so assured. That's meat and drink to Parry. Tremendous catching. And he's ever ready to restart. Wants the long restart. Does it bounce kindly? Yes, for Neath it does. Lately in support, well guarded though. It means reclaiming on the retreat for Neath, they do so, and that's the way they can do things so efficiently. Bridges had spotted the gap, but it's, well, it was offside. It's not Alan Edmonds's 46th try of the season, as the winger had anticipated. Oh, and Williams suggesting they want the kick rather than the scrum up field, but the decision already made by his captain, John Apsey. Well, we're into nearly four minutes of time added on for injury. Just to remind you that Bath have won the cup match at Twickenham, the Pilkington Cup, here. Neath seem to be heading for their second successive. I said victory. earlier it would be a test of Kevin Phillips' captaincy, and they've certainly stepped up a gear, and that's, a, again, a tribute to their fitness. Arbel Party could have taken a quick drop out, it could have gone anywhere. Swansea tried against Neath in the semi final and got punished. Paul Thorburn got the ball. Lately did well. Just watch Paul Williams in again, yet again, number 10. He's, he's a good mauler, rucker for an, for an outside half. Bridges stopped, spotted the gap, but the left wing Edmonds was a yard or so in front of him, quite rightly, offside. And. Uh, yes. They have to be Neath supporters, those people with smiles on their faces. And what an afternoon it's been. There's the Neath scarf being waved triumphantly, because now, with so little time left, it seems that that Schweppes Cup is in Kevin Phillips's grasp for the second successive year. Dan Webb poised on that blind side. He'd dearly love one quick pass. It's been tied up, though, that side. A chance for Bridge End. Luke Evans, a chance for Diplock to have a little run. Luke Evans in support, keeps the ball in play. Apsey is the man that chases it, but Thorburn in soccer style. Just side foots that, and Clyde Loring hoists an arm, and it means that Neath have retained the Swiss Cup. Tremendous scenes. The Welsh Old Blacks round off the triumphant season in the best style of all. They win this Swiss Cup final with a final score of Bridge End 10, Neath 16 and immediately the Neath captain swamped by spectators. That's the face for Bennett. He mentioned that it was a test of his character as captain and he was ready for it. Yes, when Kembury got sent off, I thought the Neath forwards were going to struggle. Alan Evans was quite content. He dropped the goal and he felt that the Bridgend pack would get stronger. But I must pay tribute to Neath and Kevin Phillips. They raised their game and indeed they finished much stronger in the end. Dan Bridget, and that's a tribute to Alan Rope for their fitness coach. Really, it was a, a difficult day, so hot and clammy, and the neat style that we normally associate with them, Phil, with this, this marauding, quick working style. We didn't see that today, they were far more in control. Yes, we saw Paul Thorburn go for 50 or 60 metres rather than the short short taken penalty. But you always felt that Neath, when well, they were 12 points in the lead, were going to be the victors. But let's be tribute to the gen. They tackled magnificently well. Mike Bud, Owen William, and for me, Kevin Phillips, and Kevin Ellis, scrum half, absolutely outstanding. Meredith well, James, their coach, said during the week that he hoped that his players would enjoy the occasion and feel that it, they would have given their all, even if they lost. How, did they give their all? Oh, most certainly. They're absolutely exhausted out there. They, they really rocked me. They played for other teams. He'd be very proud of them. I think he'd be a little, a little disappointed. He, he would have probably felt that Harvard Party took taking those early kicks that they could have snatched the lead. They always were fighting to come back. But it was a gutsy display. Not a great deal of football see them. One must be quite honest. Not a classical game. But when you come this far, those lead supporters, they wouldn't mind. They, they won a cup yet again. There was one controversial incident, of course, that, that will be talked about. Uh, whatever happens, uh, that's sending off Andrew Kemry. Yes, when you look at Fred Owen at the beginning of the season, when he sent off um, Mosley in the French game, that was for stamping. We saw some stamping here in the cup final last season, and he had warned Kembury 
and he was crazy for the young second row. All his future ahead of him, and now he misses the tour in Namibia. But quite rightly, if you're going to stamp my people in Maiman, you have to be sent off. Well, no need to ask what team these people support. And they've come from the West today to support Wales's leading club, and they've been rewarded for their journey. They will, in a short time, watch their captain hoist that Schweppes Cup yet again. And just going back to that uh, Andrew Kembury incident, or perhaps the man himself, because up until then, he'd really been the tower of strength in that neat line-out. Well, for me, he showed himself a better player, really, than Gareth Llewellyn. He'd won good, clean line-out ball, and he was blasting the game so well. Snaps through tragedy with a, you know, so silly, no need for it. He was in control of himself. I, I, I just feel so sad that this boy's career could have gone back a season or two. But, as I said earlier, when boots go in, people get hurt. That kind of ball in rugby. Oh, there's the man of the moment. Salute his home supporters. Is given a handshake by the Bridge End coaches and Kevin Phillips. It's a taste he's grown to like. And he won't relinquish that all that easily. Holding that and kissing that Schweppes cap is something that he treasures. A very emotional moment for the Neath captain. Tremendous moment. And again, rounding off a triumphant Neath season. And you were just watch or listen for the noise when he turns to his supporters his lieutenant there at his side always there Jeremy Pugh Paul Thorburn Roland Phillips no wonder there's a broad smile Roland Phillips missed last year's cup final and to be part of this and to have a winner's medal will push that to oblivion somewhere that noise and Andrew Kembury well there is a winner's medal at the end of the day and a grasp of the cup Colin Leighty Paul Williams Alan Edmonds despite the bridge end jersey and Martin Morris a try scorer Brian Williams well there's no hair really to ruffle a great moment uh, they've all been part of it and Alan Edmonds Alan Bateman very nearly throwing it to the supporters but it's, uh, and then the substitutes. Um, for Neath, Phil Bennett, it rounds off what can only be described as a tremendous season. An outstanding season, and that's what we have to bear in mind with you, that they won the merit, the whip, but everything that's gone, so they've been playing hard rugby week in, week out, but as Bajen perhaps had a chance to peak for certain occasions, so they will be very tired, and that's a tribute once again to their character, their skill and their fitness. The Bajen team, unfortunately, as John Absey goes up there to receive... They'll be forgotten. You tasted that the, your first appearance here, Phil Bennett. And it's not a, a nice taste. Oh, tonight they, they will be destroyed. They will give it their best. But second best, you know, Neath have won it. They know that they haven't probably played the sort of best of their ability. They gave it all. But tonight it's Neath's night. They'll go back and have a few beers. But really, it's awful when you come here in front of this huge crowd. And they'll probably feel, you know, their families, their supporters, why couldn't we win it for them? You know, it's, it's a very sad occasion now. Clive Rollins, the president, there. Commiserations. As Alec Williams, a two-drop ball man, goes through. And having just seen Alec Williams, right, perhaps that she, we should watch one of his drop goals, which brought Bridge End back into the game. well all afternoon, he was good controlled by the back row, Owen Williams, the scrum go back slightly, Kevin Ellis rifles the pass out, takes his time spots the gap there straight between the posts and that's easy three points Well a trophy for the referee as well, record referee, fourth cup final and again took the decision that had to be made, no, no doubting it at all, it was a sending off offence and Away, Cambry went. The try that really clinched it for Neath was the one scored by their scrum half. Yes, this was surprising because Neath were a man short in the forwards here. We thought that Owen Williams would control it, but it slipped away from the number eight. Bit of indecision by Kevin Ellis. Quick as a flash, Bridges is over. He deserved that. He, he covered well all afternoon. 
Well, the scenes that here then at the National Stadium, it rounds off a season that, that's had its uh, lows and highs. It started with the All Blacks, it finishes with another set of All Blacks winning the cup. The supporters obviously delighted with the whole occasion. Were there people that caught your eye that haven't been part of the international scene this season, Phil? Well, really for me, Kevin Ellis, I thought, played very well, very strong, very powerful, tackled outstandingly well for Bridgen, kicked well, kept his forwards going forward. Owen Williams had a good game, Michael Budd, but really I think it was the experience of the neat team in the end that told. But a sort of player like number 10, Paul Williams, put some lovely long rolling kicks in and well, you know this man has played exceptionally well all season I would have bet he had 40 games for Neath this and again played so well out there today there'll be much anticipation uh, as to the man of the match award is there one that uh, you favour? well amazingly my man of the match was going to be An An Andrew Kembury but I thought when he went off I've now gone for Kevin Ellis and uh, there's a chance here to watch that uh, controversial incident with Andrew Kembury uh, being sent off for stamping I just can't understand this way. There you can see number five goes in, looking for the ball. The ball's, all, the ball's nowhere near, really, you can't be there. The left leg goes in, the boot goes down. I don't think it was near the head, doesn't it? But still, the intention was there. Well, the Leith players have now gone on their lap of honour and it'll be as much of a fight to get around there as it was to win the Cup against Bridget. Well, we, we did it one year, let me go back a lot. A lot of years ago we won it, but we took so much of a hide and we decided never to do it again. Well, the pain will be forgotten as they make their way around the pitch. Final moments then of Bridgen's triumphant march around this national stadium, which brings to a close this 1989-1990 season. A, a season that's been dominated by that colour jersey, really. Uh, the All Blacks came in October and dominated Welsh rugby and really showed the weaknesses of Welsh rugby. The cudgels were taken up by this team, clad also in black, and they've been the standard bearers for Bennett all season. Yes, they give the All Blacks the biggest fright on the tour, and it's quite right that they have kept it right till the very end of the season, and they won't care that it wasn't a classic. They're delighted, they're winners. So there we are then. That's the Schweppes. Schweppes Cup winners of 1990. The Neath team with their pendant being flown as they do their lap of honour here at the National Stadium. They've kept their grasp on the cap. Uh, final scoreline of Bridge End 10, Neath 16, as we now join Desmond Lynham in the Grandstand Studio.